Hey everyone, it's Craig Reese with Hollywood Junket. We are back with another interview. This is actually our first interview with this season's The Voice contestants, and we are lucky to have Mandy Thomas joining us in just a couple minutes. Uh, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, normally, we would get to be on set and get to interview the contestants right after they perform live on Mondays. And obviously that has changed this year. So we are really excited to try out these Instagram live interviews. I see that Mandy has just joined, so I'm gonna add her. It takes a little bit, but I hope you guys are enjoying the show. It's been crazy already, and we haven't even started the knockout, so I am excited. And there's Mandy, hey Mandy. Hi, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm great, how are you doing? I'm great, good, just teaching a little bit over here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I was just saying, in case you didn't get to see that, usually we get to be there live on set, and yeah. obviously things have changed this year. So I'm very excited about this opportunity to have these live interviews through Instagram, and I hope it works out, and thank you for agreeing to do this. Well, no problem, thanks for having me, I'm excited. So first off, how are you doing? How are you feeling? How's everything going? Oh, well, you know, things are crazy with everybody right now. Um, trying to be patient. You know, it's, it's kind of a waiting game at this point to see when everything's going to be lifted. But, you know, I'm fortunate yeah. enough that I teach voice lessons for a living. So I still get to do FaceTime lessons with my students. And awesome. it's, yeah, it's been a blessing for sure. Um, but, I mean, other than that, I'm just busy doing that throughout the day and, yeah. you know, just keep them busy as much as I can. You don't want to sit yeah. too long and be too bored, so. That is definitely yeah. all of us right now. Um, so I want to kind of get right into kind of a question about opera and using that mm -hmm. as audition and knowing Kelly loves opera. Was that kind of a strategy? It was. Um, opera is where I started with my training. Uh, you know, I said when I was 11. Um, and I, I did that for consistently, pretty consistently, classically trained for about five years, starting out. And then I went to college and all of that. That didn't add up, but did it, yeah, until I went to college. And then I continued in college. And I knew I wanted to teach since high school so i knew i needed to be classically trained you know for that so that's why i majored in vocal performance at bethel college um it's in mckinsey tennessee one of our newspaper articles got it wrong but it is in mckinsey tennessee and you know we got to travel a lot and everything and i still sang classical music with the choir and got to do big solos and all of that so i mean classical music's always been there for me it's never steered me wrong, you know, yeah. and then I knew Kelly asked for that, so I was like, it'll definitely stick out. You know, Chris Mann, season two, did do a little bit of a classical sounding, did a few songs classical sounding, actually, um, but Kelly's who I wanted for a coach, too, so it was yeah. like, well, why not? Give her what she's asking for. Love it. Well, congratulations. I love that that was kind of part of your strategy, and on the flip, did you think it was kind of a risk or were you willing to take that risk? Oh, absolutely. Since yeah. honestly, since I hadn't actually done opera in about 15 years, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm going to do it for 90 seconds. You know, maybe it'll be good enough for her to turn around for me. Of course, you know, she could say that she wants it and then backtrack when she hears it, you know, because right. the voice is a strategic plan for the coaches. You know, they, they have plans as they move forward in the competition. So um, it was a risk for both she and I. <laughs> well, your team, Kelly, now, what has been the most rewarding experience working with Kelly so far? Oh, man. Well, um, I guess if you read my bio, it says that I have confidence issues, obviously, because of my weight. Yes. Um, and working a stage and just looking as comfortable as I sound. Yeah. You know, I, I've been in a band and everything for the last seven years, and but I've always had people on stage with me. So when it's just you having to own the stage, it's a lot different, you know. And she's one of the th biggest things she told me is just, you know, trust your talent. Your talent's great. Just be more confident and have confidence in yourself and what you're doing out there, and you'll be fine. <laughs> and so I've I've tried applying that. Yeah, and listen to Kelly. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> 
Oh, absolutely. Just She's one of my idols since the beginning. So, yeah. 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 What are you looking forward to for fans either hearing you sing or just learning more about you? Well, I'm hoping that everybody, being classically trained, you know, you can do different genres. And the reason I did not fully pursue opera, you know, to go sing at the Met in New York or anything is because I enjoy the other genres so much. Yeah. And if you want to be an opera singer, you have to dedicate your entire life to that, doing nothing but that, you know, to eat, sleep, and breathe opera. You know, I like to yodel, I like to sing pop, I like to sing R&B, and there's really no room for that in a professional opera setting. And so, like, hats off to the people, hats off to the people who commit their whole life to that, because I was not the one. <laughs> but I, I also wanted to bring an appreciation to, you know, viewers, maybe younger ones, uh, about how cool opera can be, and that you know, it's not just the huge Italian operas, you know, it can cross over into a little bit of pop sometimes, like Josh Groban, you know, he's classically trained, but he can also sing pop and stuff, and he, and he has, you know, a lot. Um, but I did do country for my battle, yeah, and that was cool, you know, because yeah. I... Country was one of the things that I definitely wanted to do. And I have deep, deep roots in country being from Tennessee, obviously. So everybody got to see a little bit of that. And I hope that they like it. <laughs> I, well, so far they are. And I, I love that you want to explore different genres. I personally am excited to hear you try all of it. And okay, I, I, I just think that's fun, you know, to experience more than just one type. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, what was the biggest takeaway working with James Taylor this last week? Oh, man. Um, he's such a legend. Golly. Yeah. He's, man, you can't, I can't say enough good things about him. He's got one of those voices that is just so soothing, and he's so chill, and he's definitely confident in what he does in his writing. I would love to work more with him on songwriting you know i doubt i'll ever get that opportunity but the little <laughs> bit of time i had was amazing um but i mean he's just you know stayed relevant and i grew up listening to him my parents you know listened to his music my grandparents um but he was he was very complimentary he said that uh vocally i sounded confident in what I was doing. Right. So that was a nice, uh, meant a lot coming from someone like him. So, um, yeah. What an incredible I mean, experience. Yeah. And he's still touring, you know, well, not if it's on pause right now, but he's still yeah. out there doing shows and everything. And uh, it's crazy. I hope to one day be as established as he is. <laughs> yeah. That, that whole experience just had to be incredible. And so happy that you got to have that. Uh, you mentioned, his tour being on pause, everything is on pause right now. And right. You, earlier you talked about uh, teaching voice lessons still like over internet, over social media. But what else are you doing to pass the time? I mean, honestly, I've got about uh, 40 students. <laughs> so oh my goodness. I don't have much time to yeah. pass, but, um, you know, I like to and paint. You're, and you're doing this answer. little show on the side, you know, so. Like, oh, and the, yes, and yeah. this little show on the side, so you know. Not, not so busy at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's going pretty well, you know, just preparing for what's next. And I don't know. I'm excited to keep watching it on Monday nights. and Because, you know, when you're up on stage, you kind of, like, black out. And you don't really remember much from your performance. And then when we see it on TV, it's like seeing it for the first time with you guys. So I, that that's was, That was going to be kind of my last question is, do you really just get to see it the same time we do? Like Yes. Yes. Oh we goodness. see nothing ahead of time. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's, it's fun, though. You know, it's a surprise for us like it is for you. So. Yeah. I love it. Yep. Well, Mandy, that wraps it up for now, but I really hope to see you next week. I want to keep these interviews going. Uh, like I said, yep. we're used to being there live, but I'm, I love this one-on-one, -on -one and I feel like it's almost a little bit more personal, you know? So, oh, absolutely. Uh, really, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I, I appreciate it a lot, and I hope to do a lot more interviews with you and, and see more of you on the show. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Mandy. I'll talk to you later. All right. Have a good one. Great. And guys, that wraps it up again for Hollywood Junket. Thank you so much for joining us today.
We hope to have lots of interviews with the rest of the contestants from this season's The Voice. So please follow us, Hollywood Junket, here on Instagram. We also have all our videos on YouTube, so find us there and follow us there. My name's Craig Reese, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.